shift to her game. Self love, her claim to fame. African, who knows her name? Witch, stay up in your lane. Never a hoe. YOLO, walls fall down like Jericho. She be deep like ESO. It's 415 out of 510. Melanin. So, you probably thought this was gonna be a music video, but that's actually today's She Leader. Today we're interviewing Zakia Harris, and not only is she a musician, Zakia is the co-founder of Hack the Hood, and Hack the Hood is this nonprofit in Oakland. And Oakland is not that far from San Francisco or Silicon Valley, and that's where you have Google and Facebook and Uber and all these big tech companies. And those are the same tech companies that have started publishing reports in recent years showing that they're not really that diverse. This is where Hack the Hood comes in, and they teach tech skills to low-income kids of color. And they do that by letting those kids make websites for local business owners. Y'all, that that idea is so brills. It is such a win-win. And you remember that music force I showed you at the beginning of this video? That was Zakia, who is also the co-founder of Hack the Hood, who is also somebody like, I don't know how she has time to do all the epic is she doing. But we're gonna go talk to her and try to find out. Morning. You roll? This is an early one. One, two, three, four. All right, we just got here. We're trying a different setup. It's a little complicated. This is gonna be impossible. So I'm holding a camera on a gimbal. You're gonna carry this mic here, and then we gotta carry all of this stuff. And we're gonna talk to Zakia at the same time. I may be over ambitious, but just imagine if it goes well. Mm -hmm. How epic it's gonna be. What are you doing? All right, cool, so where are we? Welcome to our humble abode, Hack the Hood, our office. That was my desk, but I'm not responsible for that mess because it's not anymore. <laughs> recording. Hey y'all, it's Mary and we're live on the She Leader Show. Everybody say hey to Zakia. Hey. If you have a question for Zakia, I've got Miles moderating the comments. All right, I'm gonna stop talking and let's get into the interview. We're sitting here at Hack the Hood. You're a co-founder of that. I wanna get into that, but I wanna back up first. At one point, you wanted to be an attorney. Why did you wanna be an attorney? I grew up in a world where I was handed a set of check boxes and told to pick one. Doctor, lawyer, nurse, teacher, those were the generic categories. So law felt like, um, public interest law in particular, felt like an opportunity to really help people. And after two years of law school, I realized that that was not my passion. Was it really scary for you when you were in law school and thinking this was what I wanted to do? I thought this was my calling. Did you have anxiety? So much anxiety. I was. I had moved back at home at the time, so you can imagine already graduating college, living at your mother's house, you know, your parents have dreams for you to go to college and be so successful, and being a lawyer was something that she was really passionate about, <laughs> what I was gonna be doing. And I hit that moment in law school where I was sitting in class, and I hated what I was doing, and I knew that there was this other person that wanted to emerge, and I had to have a very difficult conversation first with myself to have the courage to pursue my gifts, my authenticity, and then eventually tell my family. And she was not supportive. And most people I talked to weren't supportive because they thought, well, you've already done two years. Law school's only three years. Just finish the extra year. You can do so much with the law degree. You can take your law degree and work as an educator. But I was like, you don't understand. I don't love doing this. And I think that I was born with the blessing and the curse of never being able to do things that I didn't love. So I couldn't stay. So I left. And it was the best decision I ever made. Hearing you say that about it's a blessing and a curse that I can only do things I love makes me feel more normal. I always say, you know, your passion haunts you. It will keep you up at night. It will follow you in your daydreams. Mm -hmm. It will not Amen. let you go. You just have to say, okay, I give in. I give in to this because it's not going to go anywhere. It doesn't matter how much money you make. I don't think they realize I might change colors right in front of your eyes. Rising. So the 
song Shapeshifter I've listened to so many times. Tell me where did those lyrics come from? I was married and a homeowner and working with my partner running a successful nonprofit. I was a new mother and we were kind of like the vision of a successful upwardly mobile black family and even though I had kind of bought into this life of like buy a house, get a job, have a child, I was miserable. There was this other side of me that wanted to create more, express more, kind of break out of the box and really be authentic to me. And so I asked the universe for help and I always say, be careful what you ask for because you might not be expecting the way it comes. In the blank of an eye, my entire life was turned upside down. The home that we lived in in West Oakland where my daughter was born, we lost it due to the foreclosure crisis. The economy tanked, it was right in 2009 where the recession hit, the nonprofit industry was turned on its head, my organization lost all of its funding. We were empowering and employing a staff of all youth of color in San Francisco, had to lay all of them off so I didn't have a job. I ended up getting divorced, becoming a single mother, and it was like, who are you when all of these parts of your identity, homeowner, mother, wife, are stripped away from you? My greatest teacher was water, was the element of water. Water is always in the flow. Water takes the shape of any container. And at the time, I had to become like water. I couldn't get caught up in the identity of being a homeowner or the identity of being employed at this and having this certain type of job. I had to go with the flow because I was going through all of these shifts in my life. That's what shapeshifting means. I definitely put that song on repeat sometimes when I need to. <laughs> okay, so let's get into Hack the Hood a little bit. Four days a week when we're in programming mode, we have young people in the building, typically in after school hours. We have a variety of classes. It can be anything from how to set up your LinkedIn profile, to your resume, to coding intensive, basic HTML and CSS, to digital marketing, or even a business plan. Tell me a little bit about the youth who come here, because I know you were saying some of them are working on businesses, right? We have young people who are part of the foster care system, who want to create apps to support people in foster care. Our teen moms and young parents want to use technology to support young people who are also teen parents. And so what you find is that when you empower underserved populations with the language and the tools that they're going to create solutions to their problems. Young people today are the new generation of inventors. They are going to have to invent solutions to some of the greatest problems of our time, global climate change, immigration, police brutality, and technology is going to be at the center of that. Having a laptop will be important to go with the times. When there was cavemen, what, what did they have to do to survive? They, they needed sticks, they needed stones, they needed to communicate. Now that we're here in this day and age, in this future that we're ever so growing into, what do we need? We need technology. That technology is that laptop. What have you learned about yourself through entrepreneurship? Wow, I've learned that I really have to work for myself. <laughs> I'm not the type of person who can just take a cushy job and work for someone else's dreams. And I've just learned that I am a leader and it's something that I'm good at. And I think that took time and took a lot of failure. I also learned that I can fail. For me, when I have an idea, it doesn't always happen when I want to, it never does. It doesn't happen the way that I want it to happen, but it happens exactly as it's supposed to be. What does success look like to you? Living authentically with unapologetic boldness. So wealth isn't necessarily how much money you have in the bank. Wealth is the community that you're part of. Wealth for me is my health. Wealth to me is having a wonderful partner and being in a powerful relationship, not having to dim my light or change a part of who I am, just showing up free. I would say that I'm successful right now because I have all of those things. I have a lot of dreams and aspirations but I can say right now in this moment that I am successful. So I'm gonna tell you right now, there's a theme going on. Last lady that I asked, she said, you know, I think I have success right now. And there's something to acknowledging your happiness right now. We're gonna wrap it there. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate watching, bye y'all. I wish I had a mic so I could like hand it to you so you could drop it, cause that was amazing. <laughs> that was so good. Okay, I just got home and I am feeling some feels. <laughs> I don't 
think I expected this process to be so emotional. Although I don't know what I expected because we kind of just dove into this. You know, I've had my eye on YouTube for a minute. I've been obsessed with the community. We went to VidCon to be around it and when we came back, I thought, I've had this idea for the She Leader series. It's now or never. We're gonna do two interviews every week for a month. Let's go. It's actually a really crazy plan when you think about it. I mean, the amount of production and coordinating and editing that is required, especially when we've turned down jobs, we've turned down thousands of dollars, and it's actually costing us money to make sure. That don't make no sense, really. But you know, Zaki was talking about that passion, the idea is gonna find you, it's gonna haunt you in the middle of the night. <gasps> Even if it makes no sense, like that, that is what this is for me. That is what the show is. I don't think that I fully understand what it is that I'm chasing after with this show. I'm not completely sure. I want to share these women's stories. I want to help others. I have a feeling, <laughs> I have a feeling the universe wants me to get something out of this whole process too. I'm having some feelings. Can you tell me about them? Does it hurt? No, a little bit, yeah. Mm, not so. But suddenly I feel like this show is a spiritual journey for me. I thought it might be. How come you knew that and I didn't? Nobody gave me notice. That's what you wanted. I mean, you had something inside of you that was looking for something in life. What am I looking for? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Whatever I'm looking for, I just want to say thank you for coming along on oh, the man. journey. Yeah. Oh, well, it's my pleasure. It's very ride or die of you, honey. And whenever you have a spiritual journey, mm -hmm. just let me know. Okay, bye. Okay, so this is the website for Y Combinator. So if you have a good enough idea and it is very competitive, they're gonna give you a small amount of money, just a little itty bitty amount of money, 120K, and they're gonna help you accelerate the progress of your idea. And they have a very good track record of doing this successfully. These are some of the companies that they've invested in and helped build, Dropbox, Twitch, Reddit, Airbnb, maybe you've heard of them. All in all, their companies are valued over $80 billion. So Y Combinator is a big deal for a lot of people, a lot of people wanna get in. This is Deborah Cleaver. Deborah Cleaver had an idea, not for a company that was gonna make trillions and trillions of dough, but for a nonprofit. And she wanted to get into Y Combinator. Not only did she get a meeting with folks at Y Combinator, she says after a 10 minute interview, she walked away with a six figure donation by the end of the day. Now that honey is a boss and we gonna go talk to her today. 